somewhere around the third month of COVID, the walls started to close in. The only place left to go was down. This is what my entire basement used to look like. Just a basement. Concrete walls, concrete floors. And now, look how it looks. For years, we had an empty space. Upstairs was getting too small. The girls were getting too big. And the threat of my husband working from home with bells and whistles and monitors and cursing going off all day long got me in action. The first thing I did was come up with a plan for how we wanted to use the space down here. It has a couple of different purposes. It used to be we have a laundry room, we have storage, and we had a big wide open play area. So I wanted to define some spaces so that we could have an area to work out that could also serve as a guest room, an area for an office, and an area that's big that I'm standing in now that's like the den for the kids. I wanted to keep it waterproof because we are in between the ocean and the bay and this has flooded during Hurricane Sandy. I thought about tiling it, LVP, but in the end I just painted the floors. I was going to do an acid wash stain. I got way ahead of myself. Believe me, once we threw down the rugs, nobody knows the difference. I painted the floors, I sheetrocked, and I found a theme. And the theme was nostalgic beach going. And so I wanted some barn boards or some boardwalk type accent walls in here. And I wanted it for a couple of reasons. One is it's waterproof. These are cedar fence pickets. They're meant to be outside and get wet. God forbid it happens again. I'll have to rip out some sheetrock around the room. But the exterior walls that are touching concrete that are near moisture are meant to be near moisture. So that was one benefit of this. The other is growing up, my brother had barn board in his room. It was the warmest room in the house. It was the quietest room in the house. You could sleep in there like a cocoon. And the people that sleep down here say the exact same thing. It is soundproof, it holds the heat, and it keeps it cool in the summertime. So I love it. Plus, it was cheap, and it was available, and it was COVID, and a lot of things weren't. So I went to Lowe's, and I bought about, oh, I don't know, 337 <gasps> of these, six foot, with the dog ears, and we just cut those off. And I used leftover stain. I had some of my... Trusty Minwax Jaco Bean. I also had another Minwax, a gray, a blue, and I had, of course, uh, what's it called? Special Walnut, my favorite. And I slapped this stuff on. Nobody in their right mind would recommend the way I did it. But it is moron proof, and it was such an easy technique. There was no way you could do it wrong. So I used a combination of the stains, some watered down leftover paint and voila. But I did not stop there. Because this is such a huge space, you'll see over here. Whoop, come on, let's go for a ride. This wall is about 30 feet long. I wanted to keep the rest of the space light. So this door is also in the barn board, but I stained it with the gray and then I went over it with a whitewash of just leftover paint and water. And I brushed it on. Then I used a little bit more of the light gray stain where I wanted to take it down and a sander so I get that really authentic boardwalk look. I also did some other things in here because if you give me a theme, I'm golden. The hinges for the storage. So this is storage underneath the platform for the stairs. Tons of it. I could fit Christmas decorations for ages. Up here, the light got that nautical feel. When you stay with the theme, it keeps your shopping simple and it keeps your design cohesive. So. Over here, I've got these nautical looking lights. They've got sort of a weathered look to them, and they've got the galvanized steel like the, the hardware. I've done thousands of DIY projects. I've stained everything you could possibly stain, every flea market find out there, and this is by far my favorite. It was the easiest, and it, the results are just magnificent. And you can see behind me, look how gorgeous that looks right there. You could throw a football at it and not do any damage which my daughter's friends have done. Now, I want to show you the piece de resistance. How about that for French, huh? A little echoey because it's already been emptied out for our mode. But you can see in here, I did a little bit different of a treatment on the wall. So in here I use, forget the gray, I'll put it in the comments, with a, a whitewash again. And then I went over the edges to just soften it. 
So you get that worn out old boardwalk look like, oh my goodness, I'm going to get a splinter. <gasps> when you're doing your basement, you want to think about materials because of the damp. Concrete, even when it's wrapped, transfers moisture. This barn board was a great solution. Some of us don't have tremendous ceiling heights in the basement. So one trick you can see here I did is I painted the walls and the ceiling the same color. And you'll notice it's a white, or maybe you can't notice in this light, but it's a white with a little bit of pink. It almost looks lavender when you put white next to it. So that gives this basement warmth because I didn't want it to feel cold with gray floors like an institution. When you paint the walls and the ceiling all the same color, it raises the ceiling. There's no line where it divides. This is how high the wall goes. The other little trick that I wanted to do was to run these boards vertically. And that would have made your eye go up and made the room seem taller. However, securing them, it would have gotten too complicated because they use furring strips, little strips to nail. You can see them here. Can you see in there? to nail to it and to keep the insulation in place. And if we went vertically, there would be no breaks. So we just have straight lines with the six foot boards or eight foot boards. When you do it vertically, you're only gonna get one line. When you do it horizontally like this, you're gonna get breaks. So you're gonna see different boards and you're gonna get more variation. Despite the fact that it doesn't make it feel taller down here, it does give the wall a lot more depth and dimension. So you take what you can get. This is one of our boards. But you can see the difference in finish. You see that? That's the jackal bean, a little bit of gray, definitely some special walnut because special walnut and I go way back. All right, I want to show you one more thing. My contractor guys are really smart. And what they did was they did the larger sheet of, of plywood up here. So if ever we have a flood again, the shorter pieces down here, they can knock it off. And then all the way down here, you see how they ended the sheetrock above the floor and we could just pop off the molding if ever we got a few inches of water. So that will save us from tearing off the entire wall of sheetrock. Here on the stairs going up to the side door and to the first floor, I had my contractor cut out these holes, one here and one over here. Now it seems a little odd, but the amount of light that it lets into this room from that sliding door and from up above is amazing for a basement so it's well worth it. I also carried the barn board all the way up the side door and this takes the most beating here which is usually where there's four bikes so the barn board really gives us a lot of protection for the wall. Now as I said in here we're limited by 6 6 ceiling. Having doors in here was going to be an issue because of the way they swing. I didn't want them to interfere with the room over here. This is the door to the work area and laundry room. If I had a door here with a swing into the stairs or into this space, easy access in there without a door swing. So what we did was we made our own doors. They give us that rustic look. And instead of using a barn door, which would have given us hardware, which would have dropped down, the smallest one I could find was about a four inch drop. And so that would bring it down to six two, and that would mean my husband and my daughter would smash their heads. This is a pocket door slide. And we used that and it gave me a two inch drop. And so that's enough room that they can pass through and not bash their head. And you can see it over here again in the double doors. They work great. They came in different finishes. And again, you can see on this door, I did the, the gray and then I did whatever leftover white paint I had, went over it with my sander and they've held up to the wear and tear of hundreds, literally hundreds of teenagers. Now inside the Zen Den, you can see we have the mirror for exercise. And then we've got this fabulous lighter wall here. Packing as we go, that explains the barrenness. I'm packing up this house, but I figured I'd give you a last peek before we go. I'll show you through the magic of editing. When you're thinking about designing spaces, Make sure you think about how you're going to use it. So I knew we wanted an office. I knew that office might not work out. For resale value, I was thinking this room may be a bedroom for someone some days. That can work as a walk-in closet. I hope this gave you some ideas for finishing your basement. 
or that space that's wasted. Think about what you need first, then plan for it, and then have some fun. This is really my favorite DIY project ever. I mean, the camera does not do it justice. This is gorgeous, it's rustic, it's the everything I wanted. If you're inspired to get out there and stain something and you'd like to see step-by-step -step of how I did that, just put it in the comments. I'd be happy to show you. Thanks so much for watching.